All right, so in today's video, I am going to be giving you guys actually a ton of tips because what I did was I actually made a TikTok and a community post on my YouTube community wall. And I asked you guys to give me things that you guys struggle with so that way I can answer them. So you guys ask me the question and I just answer you. And some of the answers are gonna be me in game showing it. And some are just gonna be me here telling you it because some of them I can't really just show, I just can explain. But if you guys want a part two of this, let me know. But let me know by commenting down below what you struggle with. Because if I make a part two, I'll come back to this video and this comment section. And I'll just take you all from this comment section. But if you do enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like, be sure to leave a comment, and be sure to subscribe on the grind to 50k. Also, I stream at around 8 EST every night or every other night. So make sure you stop by. I'll have a link down below. Let's get into it. Also, by the way, all these are going to be timestamped. I know they're going to be a lot of random tips. So if you just want to look on the timestamps, either in the description or whatever, uh, you can see if there's something you need help with specifically. But the first one we're going to start off with is somebody named Bread. He said ADS cents. That's all he said. So I'm assuming he just wants tips on ADS cents. I can show you. Um, I feel like ADS Sense is one of the biggest contributions or the biggest thing that you're gonna need. Also, I'm I'm controller on PC, by the way. I just didn't feel like plugging in my Xbox. I play both, but just wanna make that clear. But for ADS Sense, I feel like it's actually one of the most important things because think about this, okay? So for example, I can play on like 100 horizontal and 35 vertical, and as long as I'm having a decent ADS Sense where I can control it, I'll be set. But if you could have the perfect horizontal and perfect vertical, but if your ADS is shit and you cannot aim for anything, you're gonna be terrible. So I think for ADS sense, you wanna find something that you can balance recoil and aim with, and like, you know, I guess your aim overall, I'll show you. I feel like it's all gonna come down to like muscle memory, but I think if you feel like your aim is all over the place right now, like as you're watching this video, you're like, oh, my ADS is terrible. Like, don't change it a lot. Maybe it's, you probably need to lower it because it, it, I don't think it's a slow ADS thing. It's probably most likely if you're struggling a high ADS thing. So try lowering it by five. And then just come to the shooting range like this and just like strafe shoot. See if you can shoot, see if you can control recoil. I know I'm using a G36C, but it doesn't matter. I'm just showing you, for example, in terms of the sensitivity control, not really the recoil, but see how your aim is and just keep doing that. And at, at most, take it down by 10, but I do that at most. I, I don't think, unless you're on like 100 ADS, which you should not be, um, I don't think you need to take it down a crazy amount. Just take what you're kind of used to already and lower it by like five to 10 and just try and get used to it. And you'll have a much better ADS sense if you lower it a little bit. If it's too high and your aim's all over the place and your recoil is all over the place, it's probably your ADS sense. All right, so this next one I can just show you right here. It's pretty simple. Somebody said, I struggle with audio. Um, quickly, normally I play on like around 85 to 100 for master volume light to hear everything. I just play on night mode. I, I'm not sure which one it is. I, like one of them, so try it out yourself. I'm stupid. But one of them pretty much makes footsteps louder and one of them makes gun gun noises louder and one of them lowers the gun noises and lowers the footsteps. So like it's either hi-fi or night mode. I guess I'm on night mode right now. Let me know if I should change this. But I feel like audio is really going to come down to personally having your master volume decently high and kind of just understanding um, audio cues, whether that's vault animations, whether that's somebody uh, repel noises or shooting glass or um, just listen for those audios. And that's where I have mine pretty high. Normally, like I said, it's on 85 to 100. I just had it lower for right now. But just once you can learn those, you'll understand more. Also, a headset is great. I have a Logitech G Pro headset. It is amazing. It's like 150, I think. It's fire. All right, so this guy said, I feel like most of the time I die because of bad placement and angles. Overall, bad map knowledge slash game sense. What can I do to improve it? Um, I feel like whenever I'm playing defense, I go into it essentially with the game plan. So if we're like, oh, hey, we're going to go uh, CCT CCTV room and server or whatever, right? Or cash. I'm immediately going to think, okay, what am I going to do here? Um, I'm going to take over my and I'm going to go and sit in rafters. There's a lot that you can choose from. You can go in different sites and want to hold different things. But let's say, for example, I was like, all right, I'm going to hold a uh, garage, okay? I'll take over my for, the, for these reasons, right? This is what I do. Whenever I'm, I play somewhere or something, I always think of these two rules, okay? Can I be needed for where I'm sitting? Can I be seen from where I'm sitting, okay? Like you may be thinking, oh, I'll sit in rafters and I'll hold this angle. This is a good angle. They can't see me. No, this is terrible because this window, you can be seen from this window, okay? So whenever you're holding an angle, if you struggle with how you hold angles in your game sense, like I said, the things to think about is can you be naded? No, you have one my. Can you be shot from anywhere else aside from looking right in front of you? No, because this reinforced wall is protecting you. So any position that you're in, right? This goes for a ton of different things. You can, you can use exact same logic for this angle over here. This is the common spot. Think about it. Hey, is there a barbed wire here so I can at least hear if somebody's coming up these stairs? 
hey, uh, let me make sure I'm not too far back so I can't be seen from this door. Maybe reinforce this wall and hold a tight angle like this so I can't be seen from this door or something. Just think about what you're doing and think about if you can be shot from your angles. Last example real quick is, hey, I'll hold this so that way I can't be seen. I'll sit like this. Nope, you'd be shot to the drone hole, right? Hey, I'll hold it like this. Nope, you could be shot from the window if you get too close. Like if you sit in this corner, you could be shot from this window. So just always think, can you be needed? Can you be shot? Those are my rules when it comes to holding any angles or just holding what I'm doing. Always thinking about the enemy and how I can, you know, play better. All right, so this guy said bad timing. Now, I feel like in general, no matter what tip I give you, even pro league players will have bad timing at times because bad timing is just timing's not going in your way. But there's a lot of times that I'll have the absolute worst timing that could have been fixed if I would have done stuff earlier. Let me give you a great example. I'm on Oregon, Oregon right now. The amount of times that I'll be running across here and I'll get shot through this window when it's closed. The amount of times that, oh, this is, this is the craziest bad timing one, right? I'll be making impacts. I'll be, you know, I'm making rotates, reinforcing walls. I'm playing Wamai. I love Wamai. I'll come over here and let's say I either want to put barbed wire here if I'm with somebody else or Wamai and I, I want to, you know, throw a my disc over here or even up here, for example. The amount of times that I'll die to somebody real quick, what they do is they repel and they shoot from this corner and they just shoot straight because it's like, you can kind of like a free kill bar, like low key doing it. Uh, if anybody's over here, I've died way too many times like that. But the way that I could have done this better would be if I would do it earlier. So a lot of bad timing in the earlier prep phase or the earlier the round will come from doing things earlier. Whether that's, hey, when I start the round, what I do, they make sure the spots that I can be shot from, for example, like I'm not going to sit here and throw my Wamai here first and then sit here and wait for it get to recharge. So mid round, I have to run over here and throw it at this or mid round, I have to peek this and throw it here. If you're playing Jaeger, if you're playing anyone with barbed wire, if you're playing anything that needs to get placed down, if you need to make shotgun holes, try and do the things where, like, think about it. Think about it. Like, for example, I don't want to come here, like, halfway through the round and come make shotgun holes here when somebody could be repelling from here or somebody could be on this window already. Think about your surroundings. So this guy said, best operators to play aggressive with. Um, I'll give you some attack and defense. So, uh, generally, I think playing aggressive, you can use any operator. However, let me make this exception. You do not want to play aggressive with somebody who you need your fucking utility. So I think you can play aggressive with just about any operator, but the ones that you would not want to play aggressive with, for example, would be somebody like Ace or Thermite. Sure, after you get the wall open, that's different. Um, go ahead and get aggressive all you want. Or And same with somebody like Smoke. I think Smoke is a horrendous operator to get aggressive with. Same with Echo, because these are two people who you kind of rely on your utility to to be for late round so you kind of don't want to get aggressive you want to play a little bit more passive you don't want to throw your life away that easy um but i think you can play aggressive with anyone my favorite operators to play aggressive with for example let me give you a couple would be solace solace you can play super super aggressive with for example sit there and just like sit by like a window i do it on oregon all the time in the garage wait for somebody to repel an army window impact it jump out wait for somebody to go in the drone Solus is by far the best operator on defense to play aggressive with because you have a 100% guarantee to see if somebody's on the drone or if they're on the claymore. So that's by far. But I think you can play aggressive with really anybody. Uh, Solus, uh, Warden, I love to. I got a 1.5 times. Um, anybody who you feel comfortable on that you can gun with. Oryx, dash through a wall, run out, kill them. You know what I mean? You can get away fast. Uh, then attack, um, Ash, Yana. Um, operators that if they die, it does not really matter. Knock two if you like. Um, if they die, you know, you have to think like that your utility is not going to be affecting the round or you've already used your utility. You know what I mean? But I think any operator, but my favorite would be probably Ash and Solus for attack and defense. So this guy said, do you think precision rings work or you just stick to control freaks? And also what's a good way to learn camera location? I'm good with learning the map, but horrible with remembering the camera locations. Okay, so the, for your answer, your first part, I have never, I don't even know what a precision ring is. Um, uh, but I do know what control freaks are. I don't use them, but I have a raised analog stick that are essentially similar to control freaks, except on my elite controller, they're magnetic and they just plug in like that. I think these are great. I've never used control freaks, but I've heard good things about them. But I enjoy the elite controller with the raised analog sticks. To answer your question about cameras, I think uh, camera location, your best way is going to be to one, play the game. And just like, for example, if you like to take IQ, and just whenever you enter in somewhere, as long as just, you know, you droned it out and there's not anyone in there, take out your IQ scanner and look around. Like I I'm on defense right now, so I'm gonna just show you like where the cameras are, like for example. But like 
on defense as well. Think about this. Whenever you're on defense, just go on cams and kind of think. And the more you play, the more you're going to learn the camera locations. Look at the cameras. Like if there's a map specifically that you struggle with, go on to de go on defense and go on a uh, custom game and just run around and be like, oh, okay, there's a camera there. Oh, hold on. Uh, Where is this other camera at? Like, see, like, watch. You could see yourself. See, I could see myself. I could be like, oh, hold on. Where am I at? Is there, there's one at the end of this hallway? Uh, let's see. Oh, is there is there one near me? Oh, I'm right here. Let me come right here. Okay, that's where the camera is. I make sure I shoot that whenever I come in. So if you want to like like a specific map that you struggle with the most, go into a custom game and just just run around. All right. So this guy said, what tip to be more consistent? I want to top frag more often. One game I'll be top fragging, and another I would go negative. I can't really necessarily show you in game how to be more consistent. So I'm just gonna make it quick and sweet and simple. Um, there's games, there's days that I'm not consistent. I think the best way to be a consistent player is to make sure that you have confidence in yourself playing. Like if you do bad one game, don't dread it out. Just always be like, okay, you know, I'll do better this game. If you, and I think the best way to kind of get that confidence is to whenever you hop on, this is what I do, come and do a T hunt. If you have more time, do a TDM. You gotta want to show yourself that you're like that guy. Okay. TDMs are perfect for that. Get like 30, 20 kills, whatever it is. You really build that confidence boost up and i think you just have to kind of go into each game always thinking about each round like if you drop like 10 kills one game don't run around like a maniac thinking oh i'm him and get fucking cooked just just always think about each round and think about winning and what you need to do the kills will come to you the rounds will come to you just always focus on that don't focus on your kd don't focus on your past don't focus on uh how you're gonna do today what people are gonna think about you just play with your team every single round and don't focus on kills and you'll play much more consistent, but you gotta have confidence in your shot. So make sure you warm up before you play. Otherwise you're gonna be shit. This guy said, I struggle a lot in defense. I don't know how to defense. Um, I kind of answered this question earlier, but I'm gonna give you another example of it. So maybe it kind of uh, opens up your mind a little bit to it. And I'm not just showing you one example. Uh, anytime you're gonna go into a defensive round, let's say for example, we were in Billers and not in Kitchen because I'm already up here. So I'll just show you this. If we're defending this bomb site. Whenever you go into a defensive round, always think about a plan. For example, hey, this is a common area they're gonna push. I'm gonna play in Aqua. I'm gonna play behind the bar. Now, what are we gonna do here, okay? First off, I'm gonna make sure, hey, I cannot be needed. I'll probably ask for an ADS or I'll play one Mai. I always play one Mai on the site, so I can throw a Mai up here, throw a Mai over here, and throw a Mai over here. So I'm safe from needs, right? And I play right in Aqua, so I always go into it with a plan, okay? And I think, okay, let me make sure I'm sitting somewhere where I won't be shot from this window. I, I can be native from below, but sometimes I kind of just got to be like, okay, I just got to play this and maybe, you know, have a teammate roaming downstairs or check on cams and see if they're in there. You know what I mean? And just hope that I don't get naded. Okay. Another example, uh, if I'm playing over here, a vase. Hey, all right. Hey guys, I'm going to play a vase. Think about a spot you're going to sit. Reinforce this wall, reinforce this wall, kind of hold an angle like this. Make sure you can't be native from here. Okay, like whenever you're on defense, just always think of a plan. Now, if you're roaming, for example, um, let me give you another example. If you're roaming up here, say the bomb side is up is upstairs in billards, okay? I whenever I roam, I tend to kind of roam in this hallway over here. Sometimes what I even do is I'll do like a little like punch hole back here and just see. Um so I can run run back to that. I won't sit in it, but I'll be able to look back to it. Or I'll just play over here. This is this is actually a very common spot that I sit. I sit right here, because it's actually a really good spot where you can't be seen if they don't join you out. I kind of sit here and I listen. Whenever you're roaming, think of a spot that you're going to sit where there's going to be high traffic area, okay? If you're defending and you want to roam, think of high traffic area spots, okay? This is generally right off the tip of a high traffic area. High traffic areas for attacking upstairs, like attacking billards, not downstairs, attacking billards, would be Penthouse, Hall of Fame, into VIP, because it depends what push they're going for. They might be going for an Aqua push or they're going to go for a VIP push. So... It's a very high high traffic area. I don't want to sit right here. You could, but you're going to get into a crazy gunfight right away. You're going to get naded. You're going to get pinched. So I tend to sit back here a little bit. I kind of wait for them to kind of take a little bit of map control, and then I retake it. Okay? Just always go in with a plan. Always think about this. Think about, okay, if, if it gets too hectic in here, I can run out over here, and I can rotate it back. Just always think about a plan before you go into a defensive round, and don't just run around like an, don't run around like an idiot. So this next one, Tim is pretty much just asking about um, kind of how do you get game sense? He said getting real-time information you can act on without anyone's help. So if you're solo queuing, for example, getting real-time information, like pretty much just kind of understanding everything. This is generally a definition of game sense, and he just wants to know how do you get it. 
Um, I think with game sense, it's going to mainly 90% of it is going to come down to playing the game yourself and kind of just understanding what people do and watching what people do. Like, for example, if I know if I'm a little rat right here and I know it's very common for people to either cross over to main lobby or check this spot, I'm going to check this. Another great example of game sense for me playing the game a lot. I know that if people shoot down this door, there's a high chance they're going to be sitting up here on this head glitch, right? So what I'll do on defense, right? A lot of times on attack, even I do this sometimes, they sit on this head glitch right here. So if I'm peeking this, what I always tend to do, just off of my knowledge of playing the game, is I quick peek that, and I just, I kind of just check, and I quick peek it. Uh, I think knowledge is going to come down to playing, dying from stuff, and kind of learning from it, and checking for it. And um, learning the patterns of people, like common spots people push, whether that is, for example, inside Sunrise Bar. So how can you counteract that? Okay, I, I know how to counteract this. Okay, well, what happens if they push me in lobby? Okay, I know how to counteract this by, you know, contesting courtyard or rotating back around. And I kind of learn all this from playing the game more. So I think to get game sense, you need to play the game. But another thing about getting game sense is generally watching other people play the game. Because if you can watch like a certain strat or a certain hold uh, or a certain roam that people hold, like pro players or better champions or stuff like that you can kind of incorporate that into your own gameplay so i think watching people and playing the game is the best way to understand game sense same with understanding how you die kind of break it down every time you die be like oh how did this guy kill me so that way you can learn from it that's a huge huge thing all right so for this next one he said what is the best way to improve your headshots there's a couple ways i'm gonna show you real quick one way is you go into general go into matchmaking preference and you go on headshot only t hunt if you do this you'll be able to go into T-Hunt and only headshots will work. And if you can kind of realize what the headshot is, uh, you kind of understand your crosshair placement, where it needs to be, it'll help you a lot. I think generally just being able to control your sensitivity is a huge thing too, because you want to make sure you're not aiming at the head and then it going up in the air because your sensitivity is all over the place. You're going side to side, same with your recoil control. But I think the best ways to improve your headshots is very simple. T-Hunt, uh, headshot only. Or just do a ton of T hunts or just do a ton of uh, TDMs and kind of understand what people are going to be and understand headshots. I think TDMs also are really good because it puts you in an, uh, a very unrealistic scenario where people are running around like maniacs. And if you can kind of understand that, how people's heads are moving back and forth, it will help you a lot. All right, so this guy X generally when to peek things. I'm trying to think essentially. There's a couple of things that I'll do when it comes to peeking things. Um... I'm not going to peek very common spots, and if I do, like, this is a very common spot for people to be looking at or pre-firing. I kind of quick peek them like this. You know what I mean? I'm not going to hold an angle like this and peek it. Um, one really bad angle to hold or peek would be, for example, peeking this main wall. A lot of times, they're open this main wall. You don't need to peek this. There's no reason ever to peek this. Hold angles like this where they have to kind of enter in, because remember that you're on defense, so you want them to enter the site. I'm all for getting aggressive, right? Like, for example, I'll hold an aggressive angle, but, like, not a crazy angle that is very common to pre-fire like this. Or hold an aggressive angle like this as long as I'm not being droned out, okay? Um, I think these are great angles to hold. And even swinging stuff like this is not bad as long as there's not somebody over here. This is not a bad angle to contest with a shotgun or a kind of quick peek like this. You know what I mean? If you want to get aggressive, go for it. But if you're talking about just in general, when I peek angles, I peek, I quick peek every angle that I take. And every once in a while, you know, my quick peek like this, you know what I mean? Just see. Or a common one that I'll tend to do is, you know, peek like this. But I think about when you peek, make sure it's a quick peek or you're committing to a peek. Okay. I This is way too long for me to commit. Like, I'm going to get cooked if I'm peeking this. So I will quick peek this. Okay. And if I have to get past here, I'm running for my life. I am not going like this because it just gives way too much time. So whenever you peek, think about this. Okay, I'm gonna quick peek, quick peek, quick peek, quick peek. Don't just be like this. Like, whenever you peek, think, should I be peeking this? Do do I need to peek this? I'm on defense, okay? Then, uh, when it comes to attack, I think you kind of always need to peek things because you want to get map control. Another time not to peek is if there's not a lot of time left. Do not peek. Like, literally let them plant. If they have to come plant and they haven't planted yet, you're in a 1v1, there's 10 seconds left. Sit here. Don't peek it. Don't go for the kill. Let him go for the plant, okay? So think about time management and think about quick peeking. Okay, best two things you can do when it comes to speaking. All right, so this guy said, I struggle with learning maps and aim. Quickly, I'll cover the maps part. Very simple. The way you learn maps is by playing the game. Um, another way that you can quickly learn maps is by watching other people that are playing on the map. Like if you're watching a streamer, watch Pro League, just watch how they play, watch where they go. And you start to kind of get, 
you know, bits and pieces of it. But the biggest way is going to be you just playing the game. Whether you just want to play casual because you don't know the maps. Um, or even I'd recommend unranked. Because if you play casual, you're going to play maps that are not in the ranked pool. Um, that's a great way as well. Um, I think just generally playing and watching people. Best two ways to learn maps. Now you also said and aim. Quickly with aim. Let me give you a rundown. It's very simple. With aim, what you want to do is come to the shooting range. Go to this guy. doesn't matter the distance. You want to work on your strafing. So walk left and walk right and just keep shooting at this guy. What this will do is this will help your tracking, okay? Tracking on a controller is very hard, but this is the perfect way. Because a lot of times when you get into a gunfight, you're not going to be holding still and let's stick an angle. Okay, you're going to be moving on the go. You're on the go, you're going to be moving. So just practice your strafing left and right and keep doing this and it will help you. Another huge thing, TDMs. TDMs are going to put you in very unrealistic situations where people are always running around like maniacs and they're always respawning and you're getting like 20, 30 kills a game. So you're going to be, you know, kind of getting your aim really, really warmed up. So those are the best two ways to improve your aim by far. Also, don't change your sensitivity 24-7. Otherwise, you're going to screw up your aim. All right, so now this guy said position during round plus tracking. So essentially like mid-round positioning. Um, for the tracking, I just answered that in my other tip. So, you know, just go in the shooting range and walk left and right and shoot at the... Um, little bot you know what i mean uh, just that'll help you tracking a lot but when it comes to mid-round positioning i think on attack obviously you're just gonna push your team whether you know mid-round you guys decide to go for a different push you just push them it's very very simple just play as a team focus on getting the wall and push with them mid-round wherever you are but i think mid-round defense is a much bigger perspective um for example right this is let me let me give you like a real life in-game example where i do mid-round positioning where i change it right whenever i play a site i always play castle Right. I cast off these windows. It makes me feel a lot safer. And what I tend to do is I will hold solar. Now, for example, if the entire enemy team is pushing A, right? Like, 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 like they're on piano window. They're on, you know, the main wall. They're over here, right? And no one's pushing from back here. What I'll tend to do is I usually have a beeper on. And I'll just throw a beeper on here. Because what you got to think about mid round is think about you need to change your positioning based off of where they're pushing so the same thing goes the other way if you're holding library and it's a huge solar push you need to then come back and kind of just play off that area where they're going to be mainly pushing from like you got to focus on where the main push is coming from so the way that you do that mid-round is whether that's checking cams seeing what they're opening up and adjust your positioning based off of where the main push is coming from all right so this guy said i need help with some ways to not die first every time uh, very simple. I can't really show you this because I can't not die first every time. Um, if you're noticing that you're dying a lot, you're probably like first, you're probably playing way too aggressive. Okay. Um, change it up. Whether that's if you're roaming and you're dying first on the roam, let somebody else roam. Go in sight and chill and kind of just get your mental back and just focus on playing a different role. If you have to roam, like your teammates are horrendous and they need you to roam, just change up what you're doing. Whether that's playing it a little bit slower. Or playing a little bit more aggressive. Like if you're if you're just like dying first because you're sitting in a corner and not playing aggressive, like that's bad. So if you die first, but you get a pick, then you're solid. But you just need to change your play style up if you're constantly dying. You're probably playing way too aggressive if you're dying first. So just tone it down a little bit, whether that's going to a support operator or just slowing it down and droning out or checking cams or whatever it may be. This guy said, uh, how to peek so I don't get my head taken off every time I peek. Um, this was, I pretty much went over this earlier. But literally, whenever I'm peeking an angle, like let's say like I want to get aggressive on this, what I always do is I always quick peek like this. I gotta lean this way to try and see if anyone's holding a tight angle. What you can also do is knife peek if it's a more aggressive one. You, so I promise you they're gonna shoot if you do it like once or twice. Like you peek around the corner like this with a knife peek, and like they're they're gonna like shoot you because they're gonna think that you're peeking them or swinging them. I even I shoot people when they knife peek me. It's just an instinct to shoot when you see somebody. But if I when it comes to peeking, I oh this is a must. This is a must. Either strafe peeking, like this, quickly, or, uh, you know, leaning left and right and moving back. It's a must to do. Like, if I just peek like this, or slow peek like a bot, you're gonna get killed. So just quick peek like this. I'm telling you, whenever you come on a corner, like, kinda, you gotta quick peek the head glitches where people are gonna be. Like, if somebody's, like, on this wall, this wall's open, like, I need to quickly get information and knowledge so I know where to pre-fire. Like, I quick peek like this. Oh, he's on the window? I know kind of where to adjust based off that. Instead of like peeking like this. And then like walking in or just kind of peeking like this and hold standing here like a bot. Like you want to quick peek, get knowledge and act off of it. 
All right, so this guy said rushing and playing super aggro. Now let me give you a great example of like a real life situation when I get aggressive or I rush, for example. What I tend to do during the prep phase, I'll make sure like, this is I do it a lot on coastline. I make sure I have a drone in the area that I'm gonna rush. You're not gonna rush somewhere where, people, where it's packed out of people because you're gonna get killed. So the best time to rush and take map control is spots where people are lacking. So if at the moment I don't see anyone's in here, right when the round starts, what I always tend to do, is I always rappel up here, shoot this open. Okay, why am I upside down repelling? I shoot this open and then I just, you know, go in. Obviously I make sure it's clear first, but I rush, I take control of VIP Hall of Fame, right? Because what I tend to do here is I always rush in here. I nade this out like this, bro. And I swear I always get a kill on somebody on base. It's a free kill every time. So if you're going to rush and take map control and get aggressive, you want to make sure you have a prep phase drone somebody somewhere in there okay make sure you can see the area that you're rushing into the initial area then you're going to continue if you want to continue to get aggressive and you don't want to drone out for some odd reason i'd recommend you drone but if you don't you want to catch them off guard you already have map control so i think at this point you don't need to get you don't need to start rushing because you've already taken map control whenever you rush or get aggressive you want to do it to get map control not to die so if you keep going like this, you're probably going to die unless you're reversing bots and they have no one watching this hallway. So the only time you should really be rushing is if you want to get map control. But then maybe drone it out, see where it is, play it off there, quick peek, shoot this guy, clear out base with your grenade from the drone hole, and then just act off of that. Check common spots and just drone it out. But I don't think it's smart to just rush right in. Just only rush to get map control. This guy said, I struggle with my reaction time for shooting. I can't really show that. Cause I don't really practice my reaction time. It's not like there's like an aim labs yet. There will be very soon. And then you can kind of practice that. Depending on when you watch this video, they're coming out with like a new thing in the shooting range where you can like, it's like an aim labs bubble. You can do that. I will help your reaction time. But if you're watching this beforehand, the best way to improve your reaction time, I think is just by playing T hunt and, or really actually playing TDM. Cause people are going to be running at you like maniacs. So if you can practice, like kind of looking left and right and kind of taking those super fast paced gunfights, it'll help you a lot. I think also kind of being energized and being awake, like I drink G Fuel, as you can probably tell, I drink a lot of G Fuel. It helps me kind of be very aware and focused. Use code PENGUIN on your G Fuel. I'm not a sponsor right now, but I just, I'm just saying. But uh, I think I drink my G Fuel, which kind of helps me kind of be awake. You don't need G Fuel unless you want it. Um, but I think kind of just being energized with something and being focused and kind of just practicing and warming up will help you a lot. But once the new update comes out in the shooting range, use the aim labs. Depends when you're watching this thing. It's going to be the little bubbles you shoot at that will probably help you. So he said, I can control recoil, but not perfect. I need help, please. I'm going to explain this to you in like under 45 seconds for recoil. I'm gonna get straight to the point, okay? When it comes to attachments for me, you'll see me use for recoil. I recommend using compensator. I enjoy the extended barrel for more damage. Uh, use a grip to get the least amount of recoil. Do not use angled grip unless you would like to. Then as well, to warm up your recoil, make sure you come to the shooting range. Shoot at this target. Move left and right, straight left and right. It'll help your recoil control. Move it further back if you'd like to. Shoot the recoil control. Just get used to it, okay? Another way, do TDM. TDM is the best way, in my opinion, because you're going to be constantly taking gunfights. You're going to have people running at you. You're going to kind of learn the patterns very quickly by just constantly playing TDMs. And number four, don't change your sensitivity 24-7. If your recoil is shit, your ADS might be a little bit too fast. Maybe lower it by five and see how you like it like that. That might be a little bit better. Lowering sense or just sticking to a sense and not changing it 24-7 will help you as well. This guy said site setups quickly see this video on screen i think this is a garfield the doc video he has like a two hour long video i always mention it if you'd like to learn site setups go watch that video maybe i'll make one if you guys would like me to i can as well but i'm sure his is like just be the same exact thing it's like a two hour long video a bunch of site setups it'll help you a ton if you don't have two hours or don't want to go watch garfield for some reason um best way to learn site setups is watch higher level players see what they reinforce see what they open up and take it from there I think playing the game, watching better players, or that video that I just showed you, that will help you with side setups if you're new to the game. I said, what is your best advice for solo players? Like get teammates who refuse to and or cannot communicate for whatever reason. Okay, let me give you a rundown real quick. They will probably not communicate with you. People are brain dead in this game. So whenever I solo queue, this is what I do. It's a must, okay? So if you're solo queuing, what you're gonna do, you're going to, if you're on defense, look how many people you have roaming, look how many people you have in sight everyone's roaming i don't care if you're playing cav sit in sight you need to make sure you have somebody in sight i wouldn't recommend sitting in sight with cav but i'm just saying for example it doesn't matter who you're playing you don't want five roamers so look around and if no one's roaming go roam because you don't want everyone in sight so kind of base it off of your teammates and what they're doing i know it sucks but it's just if you want to win do that okay then when it comes to um attack 
I think what you need to do is, even if you want to go for a solo push, like you think, oh, pushing, you know, solar Solarium on Chalet is much better than pushing Library Main Wall, but your entire team is pushing Library Main Wall, go push with them. Because you want to be able to get their refrag. You want them to be able to get your refrag. You want to be able to kind of push with numbers. It's going to help you. Uh, it's going to help you with everything. So just push with your teammates on attack, even if it's a shit attack. You'd rather be able to get the numbers than be able to then solo queue or solo, uh, you know, push a site aside or something and get killed. But overall, just just don't solo queue unless 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 you have to. Don't solo queue. It's playing with a five stack or a three stack, even duo queue is a million times better. I'm trying to implement more regular upside down repelling into my gameplay, but I could use some improvement. Any tips for cross placement and positioning? This is actually a really good question. Nobody ever asked me about this because not many people actually upside down repel and it's actually so underrated. Let me explain it to you real quick. So coastline is my favorite map to upside down repel on. There's just so many you can do, whether it's a kitchen door, this whiz door, or the window over there, or the bane window right here. Okay. But for example, this one's my favorite because I always get free kills off this. Anytime I'm upside downing repelling, I like to do it before I open the wall or the door so that way they don't hear it as much, right? So for example, what I'll do is I'll sit here and I will hold this angle, right? What I tend to do before I even move, right? I'll throw my drone. I don't want them to know I'm upside down repelled, so I'll throw my drone before I move, okay? Usually I like to do like the drone out and see where they are. A lot of times people will be sitting behind here. I will kind of quick peek it like this, you know what I mean? Just to generally see where it is, okay? If you're going to upside down repel, Make sure you drone first because you want it's very like disorientating kind of understand it but make sure you drone it out first right if this is clear and there's nobody behind here you are set to get free kills then what i'll tend to do is i'll come into a corner of something right so if somebody comes from over here they're not going to see me upside down repel and i'll make sure only my head is showing the least amount showing the better like you don't want to be down here like this don't be a fool okay show as little as you can and kind of hug this corner and sit here and wait for people to rotate Wait for people to come over and kind of just rotate as you please, but just make sure your head is, you know, all it's really showing. You don't want your whole body showing and make sure you're drawing out before you do it. Okay. You don't want to just peek in and have to try and figure out what people are. Same thing goes with, like, this is a really good window to repel on upside down as well. I hate trying to contest people doing this, but it's very easy to watch behind this bar because they have to peek up here to kill you. It's much, much better. I'd actually recommend doing it. Just make sure you maybe even practice in like a, a custom game, how it would be or something. Just, or even in casual, if you'd like, you know what I mean? Just practice it on a bunch of different windows in casual before you go and do it in ranked, because it can definitely be disorientating at first. But just drone out and make sure you kind of do it without them knowing. Do it as, as, as stealthy as you can. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you would like a part two, let me know. And also comment down below what tips you need help with. I will make sure I answer them in part two. But I will see y'all. Have an amazing day. Much love. Subscribe. Peace.